the second day of the new born and new year. And I say, Happy New Year to everyone of you. In Jesus' name. My brother, I'm open to God. You remember that he in 219 every year when I come up here. And let him remind us of so many things. But the one that I want us to look upon very well, in uh, 219 verses 2, 3, and 7, I want somebody to read it. Be members of Cherubim and Be you yes. be you yes. truthful in your lives. Be truthful in all your lives. Be steadfast in prayers. Be steadfast in prayers. Do not follow evil people. Do not follow evil people. Be loyal to all your elders. You gain in the new year. Be praying part of this order. Give pay of this order. Remember all the vision seen. Remember all the vision seen. Be good in your days. Be good in your days. Join together in Join together in prayer. prayers. Let's you need to reign in your name. Let's you need to reign in You get in the new year. You get in the new year. Verse 7. See. As our country is like now. See, as our country is like now. Uh, prisoners and sickness are found. May the Lord remove them. May the Lord remove them. By fasting and constant prayer. By fasting and constant prayer. That we may be in unity. God bless our cause in this area. My brother, these verses, these three verses, Remind us to be truthful. He want us to be steadfast and faithful in prayer. And we need for all to fast and be content in prayers. All talk about prayers. And uh, the first uh, week of the new year. Our elder directed us that we should pray, we should come together and pray. For that first week of the new year, we hardly see people in the church to do the prayers. The seven members there that we don't, we do not have people. Among the brothers and elders, it is also always assumed that they are born in the mountain. But when those who come from the mountain come back, they came on, it was only few people that were there. And so they raised big mountains in their houses. And our women, too, we hardly have women to complete certain members there. And so our women went to the mountain in the houses. And so, my brethren, that is not acceptable to the founders of the church because God wants us to pray and pray always. We are in a difficult situation in our country. We are in problems in our families. Our children, our relatives, our friends, and our neighbors Right up in one way or another against us. And the only way for us to overcome is through fighting and prayer always. And for all to be able to overcome the problem in our country is for the church to pray for the country. And when we fail to pray, when we fail to pray, and the problem continues. Who knew that? We should tell ourselves. Then we don't have mercy upon us. And so, for this uh, remaining part of the year, we want everybody to rise up to the occasion.
pleasures, fans and play, and fathers who inaugurated all the associations did not intend to split the church, nor did they tell us that when we belong to one association, we should no longer take part in the general prayers and activities of the church. May God invite us in the new year and the way forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may God now come to the text of our sermon, which is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6. I want to tell from verses 60 to 69. And the topic is accept or reject Jesus. Accept or reject Jesus. And to accept means to believe, to follow Christ, to do what he tells us to do, to be his commandments, and to reject his purposes. And so, our topic is accept or reject Jesus. And the presentation of Jesus as a child in the temple in Jerusalem, Simeon prophesied. And what did he say? He said, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. That is what the prophet Simeon prophesied about Jesus. And if we also go to the book of the uh, prophet Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 14 to 15. We can see something like that too. Saint Lord should read that. Isaiah 8, 14 to 15. Give I my good friend to read for all the year. And he shall be for a sanctuary. Yeah. But for a sword of suffering and for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. Yes. For a gene and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Verse 15. And many among them shall stumble and fall. I only want to verses 14 and 15. Verse, verse 14. Yes. And he shall be for a sanctuary. And he shall be for a sanctuary. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of the face. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of the face. To both the houses of Israel. For a gene and for a snare. And for a snare. To the inhabitants of Jerusalem. That is also what the prophet Isaiah prophesied about Jesus coming. In other words, Jesus or to set people against him. So Jesus coming to the world was to make people accept or reject him. And so the prophecies about Jesus, the prophecies about Jesus, there will be no neutral ground. There will be no neutral ground. People were either joyfully accept him or totally reject him. What therefore played out in the above passage is fulfillment of the great prophecies. What is it in that passage that was take to us in uh, John? Chapter 6, verse 16 to 69. Somebody should read it. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had, what? The 
he asked Jesus, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Do we believe? Do we accept Jesus as the Son of the living God? I bet it is easy to say so. It is easy to say so, but our practices, our character, the words that come from our mouth and our actions, they say the contrary. So, Jesus is the Son of the Living God and the Savior of the world. So, pray God. Why did Jesus work cause decision? They realized that he was not going to be the conquering Messiah King they anticipated. You know, the Jews were under the oppression of the Romans. And when they told them that a king was coming, a Messiah, a Savior was coming, the mic was set on someone who would come and deliver them from the oppression of the Lord that has overrode them. And so when Jesus came, they look at him, his message did not show that he was that come from Messiah King they anticipated. But the second reason, Jesus refused to give in to their self-centered requests. The request that we make to God always is self-centered. And what did the people know? They wanted the, uh, Jesus to put them on the right hand or the left in his finger. But that was not the purpose Jesus came for. And so Jesus asked them, you do not know what you are asking for. He asked them, will you be able to drink the cup that I'm going to drink? And he said, yes, he said, yes, you will drink, but not now. And it is not for him to give, but it is prepared for those that God has prepared for. And so for those of us who quarrel and fight because of our nation, we say, this person that was senior to, how can he now senior to me? I give myself as an example. People were senior to me, and I was raised and I bought over them. Now, people I was senior to are also raised over and above me. What reason have I to bother? And so for you who bother, you need to really know where you are, what you are looking for. And so Jesus refused to listen to that request. Jesus emphasized faith and not works. And where is our faith now? We don't believe again, again in prayers. We don't believe again that God can save us in any situation. And that is why the church of God is empty. Nobody comes to church again. Because we do not have the faith that Jesus wants us to have. The teachings of Jesus were difficult to understand and his words were offensive. And so many of us find it difficult to believe in God. And particularly when they now say, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat my faith and drink my blood, they are not like the you. And the people look at it, look at this small God. Where does it come from? The father we know, the mother we know, the brothers and sisters we know. And this one what all the one and really brought contrary to the commandments of God that we should not eat the flesh 
or anybody, even to drink and talk of animals, because God is life. And now Jesus is telling them to drink in water. And so it was a very offensive statement. And so they refused to believe in him. And now I want us to look at the examples of those who accepted Jesus. In the gospel, I want you to say, Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, we see a blind man called Bartimaeus. He was sitting down there waiting and begging for arms from people. When he heard about the tomb of passing by, he did not see. It. But he had ears. And so he heard the tumor. And so he asked, What is happening? He said, Jesus is passing by. And so he shouted, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, save you. And the people asked him, Would you keep quiet? But as they told him to keep quiet, the more he shouted, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy upon me. And so Jesus had to stand and ask him to come. They brought him and they asked, What do you want me to do for you? He said that I may receive my sight. And so he, because he believed in Jesus, Jesus said, It's, it's okay, you have received your sight. And immediately, blind materials received his sight. The next person I want to look upon is a woman that was called a sinner. And we will have that in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus. To have dinner with him. To have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house. And he went to the Pharisee's house. And he went at the table. Yes. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an act. Read the read that one again, that woman. When a woman who had yes. lived a sinful life yes. in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, yes. she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. Uh, and she, your, your, your Bible is a different one. Yes. Yes. Read verse 27. I want to say, what is Yes. A woman in the city who was a sinner, the Bible described this woman as a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat and met in the Pharisee's house, he brought an alabaster box of ointment, uh, other, uh, other apostles said, very precious. The alabaster box of ointment. The describing are very precious. My friend, are you sitting down? Yeah, as soon as you sit behind him, he began to watch the feet of Jesus with tears. And he wiped them with the hairs of our head. Oh, holy there, my friend. This is a woman. That was described as a sinner. She heard when Jesus was invited to a Pharisee's house. And because she believed in Jesus as a sinner, that Jesus alone can save her, she went there. And what did she do? She began to weep. And with the tears that came out of her eyes, he washed his head with the precious ointment that she had. He cleaned the feet of Jesus. And with her hair, she didn't want 
she fed the feet of Jesus. Now, what do our women use our hair to do? We do not even want to want the national hair that God has given unto us. We are looking for the artificial one. For all to be seen by men. And so, my brethren, this is the woman that who saw Jesus, who believed in Jesus, who accepted Jesus, and therefore nothing was valuable to her anymore. Even her hair was not valuable. The precious ointment that she had was not valuable. She had to pour it out on Jesus. And so, what do we do? What do we do to show that we believe in Jesus? Today, our young men and our young women are not looking at what St. Paul told us in the court and the epistle of Paul to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 34. Somebody should read. But I will have you without carefulness. St. Paul says he wants us to be very careful. He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord. He said the person who is unmarried cares for the things that pertain to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. How she might please the Lord. And he that is married cares for the things that are of the world. And he that is married cares for the things of the world. How he may please his she wife. How she may please the husband or the wife. There is different also between a wife and a virgin. Yes. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the world, but of the Lord, that she may be holy. The unmarried woman cares for the things of Jesus, how she may please God. But is that the practice now? Our young women do not think of how to please the Lord or how to accept Jesus. All that they have now is to expose their body all over for people to see. They do not even attend church again. They do not believe in God. And our young men, their eyes are open. To see them and to entice them. So, my brethren, how do we accept Jesus in our lives? How do we accept Jesus in our lives? To accept Jesus, as we have said, the woman who was conceived, who was believed to be a sinner, received. Jesus with open arms. All the precious things that she had, she gave it to Jesus. Even her hair, she used it to clean the feet of Jesus. But the love that we have for Jesus now is for all to come here and ask for money. And we are not even asking it in humility. We are asking it as though you gave all money to keep them and give to you. So, my brethren, we who go out every second week of the year to go and preach the gospel, we tell others to repent. We go and preach to others to repent. What about ourselves? So, my brethren, let us repent from our sinful way. The wise men from the east also came looking for Jesus. And when they came, they laid their country, they saw the star, and they knew a king, a redeemer, a savior was born. And so they came looking for Jesus. And when they came, 
They brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and men. We they presented with the Lord. We who say we love Jesus, we believe in Jesus, we accept Jesus. What do we bring for him? Nowadays, it is quarrel. The elders are set up every moment to judge cases. That is what we are bringing to Jesus. And we believe, we believe in Jesus. The shepherds do hear the good tidings that the angel proclaimed that the Savior is born, a redeemer. And what did they do? They left that sheep in the mountain. And they said, let us go and see this wonderful thing. And when they came and saw him, they bowed down before him. And when they went back, they proclaimed, now we say we believe in Jesus, we accept Jesus. Most of the time, we have no time for him. Just as it was from the beginning, there was no room, there was no room when Jesus came. So today, there is no room in our hearts. Our work is keeping us from God. Our business, our position, our money is keeping us from God. And so, my brother, let us receive Jesus as we should, as the people of all receive him. My brethren, there are benefits for accepting Jesus. That is salvation. That is what? There is salvation. And then the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles said this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Somebody should also open the Gospel according to this, uh, John 14, verse 6. What does the uh, Acts of the Apostles say? He said, There is no salvation in any other name. There is no other name under heaven, under heaven or under, earth, under the earth whereby we, whereby we must be saved. It is only by the name of Jesus. And Jesus confirmed it himself. What the apostles were saying, they confirmed it from Jesus. Because Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, what did he say? Jesus said unto him, He said, I am the way, I am the way, the truth, the truth and the life. And the life. No man come no to the Father come, come to me, or by me. Uh, come to the Father except by me. So the apostle echoed what Jesus said himself. Uh, they pray that there is no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, verse 1. Eternal life with Jesus. John 17, verse 24. Let us read that one. John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me. The prayer that Jesus made that he was pleading with the Father, that those that God has given him be with me so where be I with am. him where he is and where in Jesus. That they may be so the throne, my at the throne of God. So that they will be with him and see his glory. Which thou hast given me. Which God gave him from the foundation of the world. My brother, when we pray. Our prayers are heard. John 14, 14. John 14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, if ye ask anything I will in my do name, it. he said he will do it for us. And so you know, uh, these are the benefits that we receive when we believe in Jesus, when we accept Jesus. And we now go to where we read our first lesson. And our first lesson comes from 
the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 5, and I only take that verse 6. He says, Seek the Lord, and ye shall live. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live. Let's see it break and like that fire. In what the prophets Amos in the house of Joseph. To the children of Israel. Amos was not a prophet. He was a farmer. But when the people of Israel still refused to obey God, that is when God put the spirit into Amos. And he came to come and preach and tell the people. Tell them without hesitation, looking at their faces, not minding who they will offend. He said, It is only when you seek the Lord that we will live. And so, my brethren, the gospel according to them, John, Jesus asked the disciples or the apostles. When everybody had deserted him, when everybody had denied him, he asked them, the twelve, will you also go away? And they said, to whom shall we go? And as I said, Peter responded for the twelve, and also for all of us, if we believe so. Peter said, to whom shall we go? And so, the those of us who now reject Jesus, that in the house of God we do not have people again to worship, to pray, is that a sign of accepting Jesus? And so, Jesus is asking you, will you also go away? And if your answer is no, then we can say with Peter that to whom shall we go? You are the only true God. You are the Father and Creator of everything. And so we have no way to go but to follow you. So the decision is for you to make. The decision is for me to make where we will go. But if you believe in Jesus, if you trust in Jesus, that the, the Peter said that there is no way we will go. He said, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. He said, We believe, we trust that you are the Son of the Living God. And so, if we trust, if we believe, say hallelujah. So, my brethren, we have given you a puzzle to think upon this year. Would you go away? And if your answer is no, it means you will say with the apostles that Christ is the Son of the living God, and that in Him there is life, in Him there is everything. In him that is prosperity, in him that is promotion, in him that is anything that we want. And so let us give ourselves to Christ, and everything will be given unto us. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we honor and praises through Christ our Lord.